Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the hydrological cycle and the drainage basin. The hydrological cycle, also called the water cycle, refers to the continuous circulation of moisture from the atmosphere to the surface and back to the atmosphere. Water is transferred from clouds to the surface by precipitation, such as rainfall, snow, or hail. Rainfall, which reaches the surface, may flow over the surface as overland flow. Water which reaches the surface may also seep into the ground as infiltration. Whether water flows over the surface as overland flow or seeps into the ground as infiltration will depend on a number of factors. These include the steepness of the slope, the amount of vegetation, the permeability of the rock, and the amount of water that is already in the soil. Steeper slopes will encourage overland flow, while gentler slopes will encourage infiltration. Surfaces that are void of vegetation will encourage overland flow, where, whereas more infiltration will occur where there is a large amount of vegetation. Impermeable rocks will encourage overland flow. Permeable rocks will encourage infiltration. If the soil is already saturated with water, then less infiltration will occur and more overland flow will occur. Water which enters the soil forms the soil moisture storage. This soil moisture may flow sideways through the soil as through flow. Soil moisture may also be pulled further downwards in the ground under the influence of gravity in the process of percolation. Percolation will continue until an impermeable layer of rock is reached. After this, the water will begin to rise from the impermeable layer of rock. The level to which the water rises is called the water table. The water table divides the ground into two zones. Above the water table is the zone that the water, that the pore spaces are not completely filled with water and it's called the unsaturated zone. The below the water table, we have the saturated zone where all of the pore spaces are filled with water. We can therefore define the water table as the upper limit of the zone of saturation or the level below which all the cracks and pore spaces are filled with water. Water which has percolated to the lower part of the ground creates groundwater. This water may flow sideways as base flow or groundwater flow. 
base flow or groundwater flow is important during times of drought because this is the main source from which rivers are supplied with their water at that time. Water in the soil may be drawn upwards from the roots of plants up their stem and to their leaves where the water is converted to water vapor and enters the atmosphere. This process is called transpiration. Water on the surface, in the soils, or in water bodies, such as rivers or lakes or ponds, may be converted to water vapor and enter the atmosphere. This process is called evaporation. While transpiration is a biological process, evaporation is a physical process. The two processes may be combined as evapotranspiration. So whenever you hear the term evapotranspiration, it means we are talking about the combined processes of evaporation and transpiration. Water vapor in the atmosphere may cool and condense to form water droplets, which floats as clouds. So we're talking about the process of condensation. After this, the whole process will repeat itself again. Now, I want you to look at the diagram and try to name the different processes. Okay, so at A, we have precipitation. At B, we have overland flow. At C, we have infiltration. At D, we have through flow. E represents percolation. F is base flow, also called groundwater flow. G is transpiration. And H is evaporation. Remember, these two can be viewed as one process. And if we view them as one process, we call it evapotranspiration. I is condensation. And remember, when condensation takes place, clouds may be formed, and then the clouds in turn will produce rain. And so the cycle is repeated. The water cycle is necessary both for creating river channel as well as supplying the channel with its water. A river channel forms by the erosive action of water on the surface. So when it rains, we might have rain, rain splash, and that might start to erode the, the land. Also, as the water flows over the land, as overland flow, the land may also be eroded. And over time, a channel may be created. As the diagram shows, the river channel is made up of two sides called banks, as well as a bed. A river channel 
is supplied by water, either directly from rainfall or by snow melt, overland flow, through flow, or base flow. A river is a part of a drainage system. The term drainage refers to the natural or, or artificial removal of excess water over an area. A river is an example of good drainage because it can move water quickly over the surface. Areas of impeded drainage include swamps, ponds, lakes. All the area of land over which a river flows is known as the drainage basin. A drainage basin is a bowl shape or basin shaped land surface which aids in the removal of water. A drainage basin allows water to flow quickly over the surface because of its shape. Drainage basin is also called catchment area and acts as a huge container catching the water which comes as precipitation. Drainage basins are separated from each other by highlands known as watershed, also called divide. So once again, the drainage basin, as shown in the diagram, may be defined as a whole area of land over which a river and its tributaries flow. Watershed or divide is the highland which separates different drainage basins. Notice in this diagram how the land slopes downwards from the watershed, allowing water to flow towards the center. Now, at the center of the watershed, sorry, at the center of the drainage basin, we usually find the main river. So all water collected in the drainage basin which does not return to the atmosphere as evapotranspiration will eventually make its way to the main river. And from the main river, the water is transported to the mouth of the river. Source is a point where river rivers begin a good example of a source is a spring so the source of river or the sources of rivers are usually found in highland areas where the watershed is a small stream that flows into a larger stream is known as a tributary stream. Where two streams meet, that point is known as the confluence. The confluence may also be viewed as the mouth of a tributary stream. The mouth of the main river is the point where the river ends. This is usually the sea, which is also the base level of the river. Right? So this is where we end for today. I hope you enjoyed the video.
video. I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, and you know somebody who could also enjoy this video, go ahead and share it with them. Give me a like, and if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you for watching.